Good morning, crew. What an incredible week we've had so far as we have been in these blueprints that God has so graciously given us to know his plans of having a strong foundation in Jesus Christ. I want us to think back to the things that we have already learned this week. So the first day we learned that Jesus chooses to love us. Jesus, God, chooses to love us And there's nothing that we can do to earn it. And that's such an amazing gift. The second day, we talked about that Jesus loves us with that kind of love, regardless of our sin. Even though we are sinners and we deserve death, the Bible says, he chooses to love us so much so that yesterday we talked about that he chose to die for us. And in his death, he provided the payment for forgiveness so that we could be in right relationship with God. What an amazing, amazing gift that he has given us from our heavenly father by his obedience to die on the cross. And so I'm so excited to share with you today that not only does he give us this, but he also gives us a foundation of promise that we can count on what Jesus says and what God says in his blueprints about his plan to be true and to be trustworthy always. So if you have your copy of God's blueprint, go ahead and open it up back to the book of Matthew. We're going to go back to the book of Matthew, but the very last chapter. So find Matthew, big number 28, and we're going to read a few verses at the end of that chapter. So we have here... Um, a picture of the disciples having gathered together after the resurrection of Jesus. Let me go back up and read for you just a few verses to give you context. In verse 1 of chapter 28, it says, After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to view the tomb. There was a violent earthquake because an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and approached the tomb. He rolled back the stone and was sitting on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing was as white as snow. The guards were so shaken by fear of him that they became like dead men. The angel told the women, don't be afraid, because I know you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has risen just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, he has risen from the dead, and indeed he is going ahead of you to Galilee. You will see him there. Listen, I have told you. Can you imagine the experience of these women as they go to the tomb of Jesus and they've experienced all that has taken place and recorded in scripture about an earthquake and and the guards are now like dead men and we see this angel before them and his clothes are like lightning, they're so bright and all they must be trying to take in and the angel comforts them and says, don't be afraid, I know why you're here. Don't be afraid. I know who you're looking for. You're looking for Jesus, but he's not here. Why? Because he has risen just like he said. And he gave the women some instruction. What an incredible gift from God that these women experienced such encouragement in a time of grief. They thought they had lost Jesus. They were not fully understanding his teaching on the resurrection. And so they were sorrowful and they were mourning and they were going to grieve. And yet they were met with such beautiful and glorious news that he's not here. He has risen just as he said. And if we continue reading, we see that the women departed quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy. I love that little combo there, fear and great joy. And they ran to tell the disciples the news. But just then, Jesus met them and said, greetings. The women have experienced this wonderful encouragement from this angel, but God in his gracious love and grace, in the compassion and tenderness of Jesus and in his love for his people, he himself meets them as they're going to find the disciples, and he says, greetings. They came up and they took hold of his feet and they worshiped him. 
Then Jesus told them, do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to leave for Galilee and they will see me there. What an amazing morning these ladies were having already that they saw this angel and received this encouragement from God. And then also they got to see the Lord Jesus risen. And he gave them the same instruction that the angel did, was to go and tell the disciples and to meet him in Galilee. And so you can imagine the excitement. I mean, I just try to put myself in their shoes and what that must have felt like to be so filled with grief and sorrow at the loss of your friend and teacher and savior And then to be met by this angel with good news and then the Lord Jesus himself and how thrilled they must have been to go and share this with the disciples. And so they did. They went and they shared with the disciples and then they all ended up in Galilee just as Jesus had requested them to do. And there they are gathered in in Galilee and Jesus gives them this message. We often refer to it as the Great Commission. In verse 16, it says, The eleven disciples traveled to Galilee to the mountain where Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshiped. Of course they did. Because when we behold the glorious Jesus, we can't help but worship him. They worshiped, but some doubted. And Jesus came near and said to them, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe everything I've commanded you. And remember, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Here, Jesus gathers the disciples and he gives them their orders. He gives them their instructions for how to continue building the kingdom of God. And you can imagine maybe the disciples were feeling a little overwhelmed as Jesus is saying things like, go into all the nations, teach and baptize and tell them everything that I've commanded you. It's a big job. And and maybe they start to feel overwhelmed. And yet, Our gracious and generous and compassionate comforter Jesus offers them encouragement that he will be with them always, even to the end of the age. Let's take a look in the lunchbox because I believe today I have something to help us think a little more deeply about the word always. When I use the word always, Sometimes I mean always, and sometimes I mean always for now. Like, I always want to eat chocolate cake. Well, I don't always want to eat chocolate cake, like 90% of the time, but not always. But when Jesus said always, he meant always. You see, Jesus is eternal. He is God, and so he had no beginning, and he had no end. Now, that's a little confusing because we know as a human, he had a birthday. But as God, he had no beginning and no end. He's eternal. And so we can think of him like a circle with no beginning and no end, always. And because Jesus is eternal, because God the Father is eternal and always has been and always will be, then his promises to us are faithful and true always. Who he says he is, he is eternally. So when God is kind, when God describes himself as good, when Jesus describes himself as compassionate, they are those things eternally, which means there's never an occasion that you go before God to pray, or you go and you think, I need to confess a sin, or you are worried about something, that you go before him and that you aren't met with the good, just, holy, compassionate God. And that also means that when he says here to the disciples, I will be with you always, that that meant always. 
There is never an occasion that God's people are without him. That when Jesus chose to die for us, to forgive us of our sins and put us in that right relationship with God, we were sealed with the promise of the Holy Spirit to be with us, to guide us, to give us instruction, to help us to learn and to help us to do the big jobs that God has asked us to do. This was a big job that Jesus was telling the disciples. And you know what, crew? This is our work as well. That as we're going through our day, we're supposed to be teaching the things that God has taught us in his plan. That we're supposed to be sharing with others and bringing them to Jesus like Matthew did. And telling them about the saving love of Christ. And so when we, we look at the scripture and we see this promise of always, we can find great comfort because you know what? We get nervous when it comes to talking about Jesus. Do you know why that is? Because it's such a wonderful thing. We should just want to do it all the time. But you know why that is? Because we have an enemy and his name is the devil and he tries to keep you awfully quiet because he knows the truth about Jesus that Jesus loves us and we can't earn it. That Jesus loves us regardless of our sin and that he chose to die for us and that he chooses to love us and give us a foundation of promise that means he will always love us. That even if we sin, even if we displease him, even if we make a bad choice, he loves us Always, And the devil knows that, so he tries to get you to be discouraged and distracted and worried about other things. Instead of thinking about the fact that you have been so eternally loved and forgiven. Crew, we have a big job to do. It's to go into the world and to tell other people about Jesus. But we can't do that if we don't know Jesus ourselves that we have to be forgiven of our sins and trust our life to him. And when we do that and commit to him and put our faith in him and turn away from our sin, he promises that he will always love us and always be with us. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for this truth. God, we are not always lovable people. We are not always good. And yet you sent your son to die for us so that we could know you and we could love you back. God, help us to know you and to know that you know us and that you love us always and you will give us everything that we need in order to obey you and to do the work that you have made us to do. We love you. Amen.